for God's sake, Bish, put some clothes on. Very well, dear. I'm sure we've all seen quite enough of your... That's better. I will convert you all to naturism one day. A guitar. Give us a tune, Shelley, but promise not to sing to us. My house, my rules, Byron. But welcome to the Casa Magni anyway. Magni? It's barely half the size of the Bolivar. There was scarcely room for the Bolivar in La Ritchie Bay. I'm only passing through on my way to Livorno to meet up with Hunt and his ghastly family. Since when could you play the guitar anyway? It's a present. Who from? From me. Uh, from us. To Jane. What? It's not my birthday? I play the harp. It is not the same thing at all. We cannot possibly accept this. Yes, go and fetch your harp instead. Nonsense, Williams. Your wife will learn quickly enough, and then there will be a musical accompaniment for our races. Ah, oh, yes, for races. It's a mere token of our appreciation of Jane's... Uh, uh, cooking. In fact, I've scribbled down a few lines. With a guitar to Jane. Must I read it? Very well. Ariel to Miranda. Take this slave of music for the sake of him who is slave to thee. As in the Tempest. Ariel is Miranda's servant, Williams. You're in there too, as Ferdinand. I see. It goes on for pages and pages. Doesn't Ferdinand get shipwrecked in a frightful storm? Yes, but he and Miranda live happily ever after, just as I am sure Edward and Jane will. The fishermen say that storms are heading for the Gulf of Spezia. Nonsense! There's hardly a cloud in the sky, and the Don Juan would outrun any storm. What? That death trap? It is no match for the Bolivar. Williams and I have done a lot of work on the mizzen sails and the bowsprit. The sail to hull ratio is far too high. It is ballasted with too much pig iron. The freeboard is practically beneath the waves. Maybe, but it is quicker than your vast ocean going schooner now. Fighting talk. Just listen to the little boy squabbling. Mine's bigger than yours. Oh, no, it isn't. Would you begrudge us a little sport? I've just lost a baby. Perhaps you didn't notice. I'm not very well, but there are no doctors out here. Couldn't you just look after me for a change? But you know we've arranged to meet Lee Hunt at Liverno and ferry him back here. Of course you have. We'll hurry back before the storms arrive. I wish I could break my chains and leave this dungeon, but I can't. We can get back under full sail in seven hours. Don't worry, Mary. I'll rescue them. Uh, here's Claire. What is that man doing here? Byron is just here for a quick luncheon en route to Liverno, Claire. Is that his boat in the harbour? It blots out the sky. I shall be in the village. Let me know when he's gone. Don't be unreasonable, Claire. Unreasonable? Just how reasonable would you be if it was your daughter who had been stolen from you and abducted and killed? Allegra wasn't killed. I loved that girl too, you know. You neglected her, brought her into contact with disease and did nothing while she faded away, with no mother to care for her. I made sure she was well looked after. And when poor Allegra died, you didn't even have the courage to tell me yourself. I, I, I... None of you did. Like I was some poor little mad woman who has to be kept in the dark. My one and only daughter. That's not what I've heard. What? She wasn't your only child, was she? Hopner has told me everything. That scoundrel? You didn't believe... What? I don't know. What did he say? Bish, not now. We need to know what lies are being said. He says the little baby who died, Eleanor, was Claire's and Shelley's. That's a monstrous lie. Do you think I would have given away another baby after what you did to Allegra? Shelley? You're wrong, Byron. The baby's mother was Elise, our Swiss maid. I assume the father was her husband, Paolo. But who knows? Yes, who knows, eh? Claire? That was not my child. It might have been, but it wasn't. 
I know you think me some kind of lascivious whore, but it was you who made me thus. You're a tiger with a thirst for inflicting pain on defenceless women. Claire! Claire! And you? You're no better, are you? You and your harem traipsing around Europe after you, having your babies, swooning over your poems. No one was ever forced. I looked after you. I loved you. Love. Oh, yes, love. You loved us all. And then you didn't. And I was just another well-beloved, another epicycidian. But look at the wreckage along the way. The babies born and not born. The pain. The triumph of life. The what? Nothing. Just, just a poem. I remember the first time we met. You said your poems were your children. Perhaps, like Byron, I've given my love too freely. Free love? It destroys all tenderness and makes monsters of us all. It has made our lives a perfect hell!